What's up, everybody? We're back for another episode of the Runners Club Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We love you. Mm. I hope you're having mm-hmm. a great day. I hope this is, you know, just an added plus, like the sprinkles on top of all Where the greatness happening in your life, all the blessings coming your way. I love it. Um, I, I diddle that. I uh, uh, endorse that message 2,000%. I had uh, uh, one of our runners, uh, um, uh, he runs with Tortugas, Manny, uh-huh. popped up in the DM. He really enjoyed our last episode. Um, I should have asked him if I could have said his name and shared this, but sorry, Manny, my bad. But he's hopped up in the DM, which is like, you know, he he heard the story that Gabby was telling. You know, there was a lot of parallels for him and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, yeah. like it resonated with him personally. You know, I just want y'all to know, like, I really appreciate y'all for, you know, DMing and sharing what you like or dislike about the podcast. We really appreciate that. Gloria said we need to stop mentioning. Go to our YouTube page if we're not actually going to upload the videos. So, you know, we, we take, Don't all, look we at take me. all critiques. <laughs> we take all critiques. <laughs> Gloria said, "I want to see it, but you're yeah. you're you're low key kind of uh, uh you kind of <laughs> you kind of gaslighting me right now. Yeah, you're kind of yeah. capping so, right now. Okay, my apologies. Bad. Stop it. <laughs> Everybody's looking for the video. We will no know. longer mention it until we're ready to go. Just give us you know a little bit more time. Right, right, right. We'll catch so, up. I'll say all that to say we appreciate all feedback." Um, but it's all love. You already know it's in Gonzalez, man. We here for another one. It's peak week for your boy. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all had peak week last week, you know, for the <laughs> Chicago, but some of us doing international marathons would be out in Toronto. You better um, say that. You feel me? My first time going out the country, actually, the whole time. Wow. So did you get your passport recently? Did, was it a Hell moment? Was it like a whole no. moment? when? It, oh, it, oh, it hasn't come. Okay. <laughs> Hell no. I haven't even put in the application. Oh, okay. Listen. Yeah. Listen, you might yeah, need to expedite it's, that. It's wild. Like, I've been trying to, like, I, this, first of all, why the fuck is it this hard to get a passport application? Like, why is it this hard to get a passport? Like, I should be, it's 2022. Like, it's, I should be able to go online, fill out the form, hit submit, put my credit card in, boom, and then it's out of sight, out of mind until it shows up in the mail. They like, nah, you can, I'm I'm thinking I'm doing that whole time. They like at the end. So print this out, make an appointment with your local post office and go there. First of all, the post office workers don't pick up telephones. How am I supposed to make a, an appointment by phone? It's like appointment only. Call us. We're not going to answer, but call us. Just pop up so, on them. Right. All so, they need to do but, is take your photo but and then send when it. I, when, when do I have time? I know. When do I, I have time for that? But think I don't about... have time to just be at places. Like, no, like I'm... Like, I have a hard time getting to where I need to be when I need to be there. And now y'all want me to just pop up on y'all. Like, that's it's too much. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do the 48 hour joint. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead, you know, book an appointment 48 hours uh, before my flight. Go sit in the office two days before my flight and walk out of the door with a passport. Like, that's 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 it. That's all I can do. We leaving in three weeks. What else can I do? Expedited is five to seven weeks, which is really 10 to 11 for the government. So it's, Facts. I don't know what else to do. Facts. Well, I mean, it's not easy to get a license either. I'll just say that. I don't, I feel like anything is like that you need to get with your photo on it to go anywhere. And now they're coming out with this real ID stuff. And it's like, but actually it's just a driver's license. I'm like, what, what are we? With a star on it. Why are we having this conversation? Why are you guys making it so freaking difficult? Just give me what I need. Listen, so I need a driver's I, license? Great. Like what? Two thousand percent. I updated my 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 state ID, right? Because you know, I'm out in Arlington, you know, I'm I'm out in a, a, a very, very white community, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just figured it would be safer for me as a black man to have an ID with an address that says I live out there. I be long. You feel Thanks. me? Like Here's my address. I don't want no cop pulling me over on a minor Talking traffic about, violation. Why are you like, in this area? Why are you out here? Like you far from you home. You're on 63rd in Chicago. Like no, this is not so that. I, 
I do that, you know, I got, they give me the little paper joint. They supposed to mail me the physical copy. I still haven't gotten the physical copy. The picture on my paper copy is completely been wiped off from being in my, in my wallet and stuff like that. And so now it's like, I'm just out here. The lady was laughing at me last night. She was like, yeah, can I see yo? Yesterday I went to the bank of my business account. It's like, yeah, let me see your ID. I handed the paper joint. She just started laughing. I'm like, yeah, you, it's, you got to look at the old ID and you're going to see Compare that that's names. really mean. You know, you got to, you know, it's a whole Compare thing. the data, you know, that just the information in front of you and figure it out. I don't know. You know, she like, boy, you need to get your shit together. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm just out here trying to survive in, in Biden's America, you know, trying to make it happen. But Biden is so funny because it's like, I forget sometimes. That he the president? Yeah, it's just you know what I mean? There's a lot happening. I don't even want to get into it. But at the same time, it's like compared to Trump, I just be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Biden's the yeah. president. <laughs> whole time. Whole time. Whole time. Biden is the president with his little old ass. Uh, um, Hilarious. Shouts out to Grandpa Biden. But, you know, this ain't that podcast. I don't nope. want to trigger nobody. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. They were talking politics. I just got done nope. listening to the Daily. I, I, I'm not ready for nope. that. Nope. You don't know. Mm-hmm. But not at all. Y'all here. It's peak week. Your boy running 20 miles this weekend. Congratulations. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I need all of the luck. I need everything. Listen, I, uh, you know, today is Thursday, so it's the Wind Runners track. Shout out to the Wind Runners. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I go ahead and follow Bay like a little puppy right on up to Montrose track. You know, do, do the little workout and stuff. I didn't have my... I didn't have me a track workout ready. So I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do when I get to the track. I really don't want to run. My whoop says I done slept for three hours and 40 minutes. It's on red. It's like your body is not prepared to take strain today, sir. Um, so, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. And she like, well, uh, just do our track workout. And so I look at it. Gee, mm-hmm. the wind runners be running. running. I did they track workout. I did they track workout at my pace. Mm-hmm. And I skipped the cool down. I know, y'all, if you come to my Wednesday recovery runs, I'll tell you to cool down. It's very important to the process. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. Do the cool down. I was tired of running. I felt like not doing the cool down. So I stopped my run and it was like, oh, yeah, you just did 6.43 miles. Damn, damn. Damn. And well, the difference though is that they're running faster. So the cool down feels like it's, you know, but when you're running at a slower pace and you already feel like you've been doing the most, the last thing you want to do sometimes is run more because it takes longer. Gee, let me tell you what they did to me. So the workout is eight, the workout was 800, 800 at 10K, 1200 at, uh, 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 Look, Coach Rob, I know you're listening. If I'm giving out too much information, you just need to DM me and let me know that, like, hey, keep Stop that close it. to the chest. You got to chill. Um, but in the meantime, in between time, ask for forgiveness. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, what would I say? It 800 was 800 at 10K. At 10K, 1200 at 13.1, and 1600 at 26.2, right? And then 400 um, recovery, easy as fuck in between right and then you do that twice you know so that's what i did you know you know cause plus the warm-up and everything so i did that i'm on my last i didn't did majority of the workout i'm on my last little you know 1600 i'm at my marathon pace you know i'm 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 breathing hard i'm in my second lap you know next thing i know I hear Brittany just chattering. Brittany just, she's been talking since she got there that morning. So she's just chattering behind me, right? And I'm like, I got my headphones on. I'm listening to Bill Maher and Woody Harrison talk shit about yachts in my headphones. And I'm just running. Next thing I know, I hear Brittany chattering. I hear uh, uh, a few other, you know, feminine voices going off in the back of my, in the head. I'm like, you know, it's just getting close. And, you know, you hit the steps, you hit a foot, you hit a feet. And it's, it's more, it's more than three of them. You know, next thing I know, it's like, it's it's overpowering my headphones. It's like right there. So I turn around and I'm finna get swallowed by the wind runners, right? You know, like they just like circle around. Mind you, I'm in lane three. I don't touch You're lane You're trying one to lane mind two. your business. That's, 
that is their lanes. That right. belongs to them. We over do not there. go there. Right. I'm good. I am two lanes over. I am in lane three. Okay. Here they come. They just and and go. I'm like, oh my god, am I about to get swallowed by the wind runners? Yes. They just and go for me. You know, Brittany say something slick as she running past. It kind of it stung a little. I know she ain't mean it. It was a joke. It stung a little. You know what I'm saying? I was I was feeling some type of way because they was doing a easy as fuck for a hundred. I was running my best effort. <laughs> <laughs> I was running my best effort. Okay. Like I was pushing. All right. And so they going and then so for a minute, I'm just like in the middle. I was like, oh my God, is this I'm in the pack. This is what the pack feels like. And for a split it was second. You know, it was short lived and they just they just kept going, my baby right along with them and stuff. I'm like, I'm like, they just chilling. I'm just giving out here, just giving my best little effort. And they just, oh, hee, hee, hee. I'm running past you in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. That. That's Thank what I needed at the end of my workout. Right. That's I would have been all the way in lane like, five. Way yeah. over there. Like, don't That's, even come over here. <laughs> let me just do the outer rings of the track. <laughs> Like, matter of fact, is there another track nearby? Like, (laughs) goddamn. Right. This is why the whole time I was going on the trail and not running on the track in the first place. Right. So, you know, that was that was my running experience this morning with the wind runners. Shouts out to them. They run. They fucking run. Yeah. Their paces are wild and they run. Like you gotta see their legs moving. Cause like of course they pass me and they get around the they get around the curb before they pass me in the middle of the straightaway. They get around the turn around the curb, the corner, before I even make it into the corner. Right. right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, they're oh, already okay. on their way back to lap you. <laughs> they on the other straight. They on yeah. the other straightaway. They, yep. And so I, I look across and I'm just, you know, watching them in admiration, watching all of their legs basically move fast as hell in unison and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it's like, it's 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 a beautiful sight. Yeah. It's a beautiful sight. But it's something it's to witness real. for sure. It is real. Yes. Wow. Yeah. My my running experience this morning, since I'm two hours ahead of behind you and, you know, because it's only <laughs> just now nine. I know it's 11 there. Um, uh, I just, I went for a little quick run. You know, I'm trying to get out the door within the first hour of me waking up because, you know, I've heard that it helps to set your circadian rhythm and gets your everything moving. And so that's my newest right. practice. And it's the weather here right now is just mm, chef's kiss. Okay. Oh. Sun be beaming. Right. Every it's just yeah. like gorge and it's not too hot. I'm like, this is my weather. This is what I've been wanting my entire life. So it makes it easier to step outside, you know, and get it get in a couple miles. I love that. I love that. I love that for you. Like it, it was cold as hell this morning. So okay. <laughs> please enjoy that. I was not dressed for say to run this morning. <laughs> summer's over here in Chicago, so enjoy that. Okay. Like that I feel sounds... like I should stop talking about the weather in LA at some no, point. No. I feel like it's no. insulting. Like December 13th. No longer mention LA. Okay. <laughs> That's the day before until, my birthday. Until March 25th. <laughs> until March. <laughs> Low-key, like, May. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, it, that sounds awesome. Well, we have a guest, folks, and actually two guests. And so I just want to let them in real quick um, now that we've gotten our little intro together. Look at that. Within 15 minutes. How good are we right now? Listen, we live it. Yes, we are. We're getting into the groove and we will be right back with our guests. Okay, we're back and we are being accompanied by Nathan and Cindy, which I'm very excited about because they started planting seeds recently and I've been wanting to learn all about these things. So hello, you guys. Hey, thanks for having us on. We're excited. For sure. Um, So I just want to allow you first to introduce yourself because there's a lot of people that already know who you are. Um, But give I just love giving people an opportunity to like, make it their own in this moment because we were always going through transitions. So what's the newest of the both of you? Sure. 
Yeah, I mean, like everyone always says they know me through Cindy's Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I was live, but I am a person outside of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm Nick Cordero. Uh, as we alluded to, we started planting seeds back in February of this year. Um, but I'm just I'm just a gym bro. Y'all occasionally catch me during a running workout when I feel like pulling up. Not really a distance runner like that, but you'll catch me on a 5K maybe. And uh some miles in, but that's me. That's a little bit. Love uh, that. My name is Cindy Marquez, and um, wow, how do I describe myself? I am a gumbo fit captain, so I've known Courtney for a couple years and Ian. Um, and I am a certified nutrition coach and also an RCA level one certified coach. Also, shout out to Gumbo Fit for that opportunity. Um, so I've been involved in the running community for a couple of years now, and it's definitely like my community is is running now these days. Um, and I uh, work for a civil rights organization here in Chicago, which is something that I am really passionate about. Um, and I'm the daughter of Mexican immigrants, which is also something else that I'm very uh, passionate about and is a big part of my identity. Uh, and we started, yeah, planting seats together with Nathan in February, uh, which is a, our little passion project. And we can share more about that. First of all, yes, to all that you just said. Um, it, and happy um, Mexican Independence Day, because I missed it this year because I'm in L.A., but I'm like, I miss how lit the city gets in Chicago Yo, every year. And like and then the, t- the opportunities you have to drive through like Lakeshore Drive and not be stuck because like I don't go no- if you're going north I'm sorry it's over yeah. for you you're gonna be staying there for a while white folks look hilariously irritated during it all of that but like the times I've been able to like drive south on Lakeshore Drive and be in the middle of like the celebration of the Mexican Independence Day it's like it's so live and nobody yeah. can stop it no one can get in your way no one yeah. you take over the city I love it yeah, actually, there is so Sarai, who we all know, she works for the Little Village Chamber of Commerce, and she asked me to help with the event this year. And it was such a bum. It was raining all oh, day, no. the day of the yeah. parade. So, I mean, people still showed up and like, it was fun. It was a good time. But like, normally it would be, would have been lit, like people passing out tequila shots, you know, oh. but it was quite the same vibe with it pouring, but it was yeah. a good Okay, well, where I want to know, like, where you all, where you two met first, like, what, how did you two? What's the genesis there first? Because this is like, this is like a running power couple, right? Yeah, we love, we love running fit bays. Yeah, yes. I mean, it was just another day in the hood, you know. We was at uh, uh, we was at Douglas Park. Uh, I was at the time working at my previous employer. It was like day five of the job. And we were doing a volunteer event. I uh, previously worked a nonprofit at my block, my my city. Um, so we were doing a volunteer event in 2020, COVID times, where we were distributing PPE, so gloves, hand sanitizer, masks, the whole nine yards. And Zindi's on the associate board of the organization. And I saw her at Douglas Park. And I was just like, oh, we showed you over there. We're in the Jordans. Uh, we're in the Jordans. Hey, but it was like day five of the job, you know, so I was trying to be low key. I was like, I can't be caught up out here, you know, flirting on the job in week one. Um, so I kind of kept my distance, but I made my presence known. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, so right. like that same day, I noticed him, but we didn't talk, you know? I was yeah. just like, hmm, okay, I, I see you, you know? And then he followed me on Instagram after, so, you know, it, it went down in the DMs a little bit before mm-hmm. we hung out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like three picks, you know. <laughs> you gotta let them know that you're there. You can't just follow. It has to be like a series of events. Yeah. No, uh, for context, uh, one of my really good friends went to high school with her, and I was uh, talking to him on Instagram because uh, we normally talk to Instagram, and he just like sent me her profile like randomly, and he goes, "Oh, I think this girl." was at the event you were at. And I was like, oh, that's Shorty with the Jordans. And then he's like, what? Because he wasn't at the event. Uh, <laughs> so then right away, I hit the follow button. 
Uh, and then, you know, it just started started creeping and throwing some fire emojis on the stories. And then uh, it took over. The fire life. emojis is way Fire, fire, fire. Like, Whoa, what, really got me, what really got me was that he started posting about, like, eating plant-based. And I was like, wait, mm. like, I'm not at this point. It is very rare to find a man who's into that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, y'all be liking your burgers and your meat and what whatnot. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this mm-hmm. is okay. You know, I'm vegan. Let's talk. Let's chat. Not not the plant based diet securing the win. I love it. I love it. But yo, the fire emojis is yo like that's the move because it's safe. You know, if 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 Zindy wasn't interested, you could just be like, oh, you know, I you fly. You know, I'm just I'm you know I'm interacting with your content. But if not, you know, nah, baby, it's hot in here. Like, what's good? <laughs> uh, but, you know, but like, what I what I would tell people is like, all guys be doing the same same stuff on Instagram. They be throwing like hard eye emojis on girls, like posts and stuff like that, and it's very unoriginal. You know, not that the fire emojis is original, but I was like, let me learn about her interests. You know, see what she's about, and obviously we have some similar interests that she was alluding to. So then just took one there. It's calm. I love it's it. calm. It's, I yeah. love it. I love it. It's the swagger and the confidence for me. He's like, you know, like I just, I just pulled up, you know, shot my shot and went in, you know, threw a couple salads up there, you know. Oh, and it was... That's exact. In retrospect, now that we're talking about this, I'm like, so maybe he intentionally was like, she's vegan. I should post a salad picture. You know? <laughs> you uh, I'm Not even. I was doing that because I do that. Uh, but yeah, the romaine know. emojis left and right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to throw out the bait. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. So, so, so I'm assuming Nathan, you asked her out on a date. No, actually, uh, she asked me on a date, and then I didn't there respond. We go. Uh, you didn't respond. So right. I, I, I responded, but not to the question. I just started talking about something entirely different. Uh, <laughs> it's like, gee, 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 gee. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The question I asked was, "Do you want to go on a date?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, oh, right. I did like right. built up some anticipation because uh, so she asked me out through the DMs and then I was like, nah, I'm going to talk about something else right now. So I started talking about something else. Then I brought back up the question like a week and a half later and I was like, oh, you still want to go out sometime? No, you know? but wait, it was so confusing because I basically asked him to get drinks, right? And he gave me the like, like he didn't really answer, but then he started, I wanted to plan this like voting voter registration and census drive with this nonprofit that he worked for and I was on the board for. It. And so I was like, oh, let's like, and then he, he dived into that. He started like planning that internally and was like, this is how we going to make it work. Can you design this? So I'm like, how, why is he helping me? If he's like, you know, this is, he was going the extra mile outside of his like job description. I'll, I'll to help me organize this. It. That is within my job description. It was not. And <laughs> So I, I then yeah, but you know he did circle back a couple of days later and was like, "Let's get drinks." So I was like, he thought <laughs> yeah. he wanted to be the one to ask, right? Yeah, he started playing cool. I love it. Listen, I love y'all. Y'all are awesome. I love the story. I love the energy. Y'all be fine as hell on Instagram <laughs> and stuff like that. I especially love the Planet Seeds content. That is my favorite. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. What is so? Yeah. So what made you? start that you guys you started dating and then you're like you know um cindy you have your nutritionist like a certification and like and i know nathan you're a trainer right that's uh and so like that came together and you're thinking okay planting seeds tell us about the name and like the mission vision for that yeah yeah i think like so for me it was definitely um it So like health and wellness wasn't really ever a priority like in my household growing up. And it was just literally because my parents were focused on like getting food on the table, period. Right. Right. Like they were concerned with like, oh, my eight-year-old's eating hot Cheetos at like (laughs) in the morning. Maybe they should be eating something else. Right. Like it's like it just wasn't really talked about nutrition or like working out and things like that. And also like my dad, I always wanted to play sports actually. And he like was like, no, sports are for boys. So like I didn't really get into any of that until I like was able to make my own decisions as an adult. And um, I was like very unhealthy at some one point in my life and really overweight. And that, that like, you know, my mental health was being affected. My relationships were being affected, all of it. And so I, there was just like a, like, you know, it got to a point where I was like, I really need to do something about this for myself and for like the longevity and health of my life. Right. I don't like have health issues like 
when I'm older and like all that. Um, so it was like a really personal decision for me. And then when I, and then running kind of just like, and going vegan happened along the same time that it just like escalated it for me even more. Cause I'm like, wow, like I, it just being vegan made me feel the best I ever felt in my life. Mm. And then also like running gave me more than just like, it proved like I proved to myself that my body could do incredible things, but also it gave me a whole community of people that was beautiful. And it just transformed my life in a way that I was like, you know, I feel like often the barrier is like getting started for people. How, yeah. where do you start? Mm-hmm. And like food is also such a hard thing because it's like so involved in it. It can be a vulnerable thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I got, yeah, that's how I got really interested in it. And then um, with, him being like a personal trainer, I was like the food and the training together. And like we, and it's plant focused around plant-based nutrition. And so we were like plant the seed as and like get started because mm-hmm. for us we really love to work with um, like novices, newbies. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so that's, that's what I would say. Sure. I think uh, for me, like I always grew up the very skinny, scrawny kid. Uh like no muscle on my body at all uh it's like no one thought i like work out or really did like active like that for real and then when i got to college i just started taking uh like lifting a lot more seriously and taking my body a lot more seriously and i actually had been i've been a pescatarian since i was like like 13 years old uh wow. so like very long time now but i even then cleaned up my nutrition even more in college um and started to reap the benefits of that and then I was training people in college, like unofficially. I wasn't certified at the time, but mm. a lot of people would just see me at the gym and just like slide my DMs and be like, yo, can you like train me? I'd be like, oh, for sure. So mm-hmm. it's working. And I did that for about two years. And then kind of going into like 2019, 2020, I started doing more so like consulting. So I was just building out like fitness plans for people. So I kind of already had that experience under my belt. Um, and then Fast forward to 2022, we were wrapping up our certifications at the same time. Uh, I finally got certified as a trainer. She got certified as a nutrition coach. And we're just like, let's do the thing, you know, and uh, let's start it. But uh, I think it really is for us about working with beginner clients or even people just trying to get better at programming how they go about their fitness, their nutrition. And beginner kind of means a lot of different things. You know, it could be maybe you haven't really been to the gym at all, or maybe you are in the gym, you just don't know your way around everything. Or maybe you're, you know, we also offer like runner strength program right now. So maybe if you're a runner, we've never really done strength training and really honed in mm-hmm. on it. But um, that's what we're really about. And it's been uh, it's been awesome starting since uh, February. Yeah. Or like having a structure around, like so right. a lot of people will just go into the gym with no plan and be like, mm, right. I got this list of like some four exercises I wanted to do. Ian raised his hand. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, what are you going to do? Like laying out an eight week plan, right? So that it's like, you're progressively working towards something, gaining strength, mm-hmm. gaining muscle, like that, that's like what we do. That makes it easier for someone to then just walk into the gym, have a plan. And and that's often the feedback we get, right? It's like, it feels so good to walk into the gym and not think about what I'm doing. Cause I have my like day. Right. Yeah. Um, right. it takes like, that. that pressure of like, you know, oh, I'm not going to go today because then it, it just like alleviates the work that you have to do to even get yourself through the door. Yeah, I think so, that's... Or go ahead, Ian. I'm sorry. I, I was going to go back a little bit. So, Zindi, you have been a vegan the entire time that I've known you? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I, so you've been training for multiple marathons, multiple half marathon races, all of that while being vegan, recovery, mm-hmm. this plant-based diet and everything. And you... I've, I've watched you grown as a runner and you've gotten stronger throughout the years and you've been able to do that while truly being vegan. Yeah. Yeah. I've been yeah. vegan for four years and I've been running for like three. So yeah. And, and yeah, did it I, take you like, did, did it take like some tweaking once you became like an athlete to find like, uh, the right combination of foods, the right foods with high protein value. And I know, Courtney, you just kind of speak to this too, because you, you're a vegan sometimes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so like, you know, did you have to like, did you have to like tweak your diet a lot? Did you have to add more of something or just more food in general and stuff like that to be able to recover your body as an athlete? 
Yes. I noticed that actually, I learned that last summer training for my first marathon. Um, Cause I think I was, the, and actually Nathan was calling me out on it a lot over the summer, but he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, the carbs, like that's part of it, but you need to throw some protein in there for your recovery and like your energy levels and everything. And um, I just wasn't eating enough protein all last summer, to be honest. And I felt like mm. it would, I would be tired. Right. Or like I would wake up for that next run and workout and feel like I didn't recover from the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, I would just consistently be like completing to deplete my energy levels and, and, um, but not like replenishing it with the energy, the protein that I needed. So I learned that. And, and like, I did run the merit, like I completed the whole training cycle, like not really being aware of that until after when I like reflected on how that went and how mm. I felt on race day and how yeah. I was like fueling during my long runs and all of that. I was like, oh, like there are some tweaks that you have to do on a plant-based diet that can help you know, so that you do recover faster and that you perform better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. And so living like this life, you know, completely yourself, you are able to take those personal lessons and then apply them to your clients. Yeah, for sure. Like that's, yeah, I, I, we haven't worked too much with um, runner endurance athletes specifically. I mean, they usually, they come and cop the runner strength plan and then go on with their training, you know? <laughs> Um, but uh, some of the other clients that we work with are more like with their strength training in the gym and then, yeah, talking through their nutrition, but yeah, for sure. Like what I, what I, my lived experience informs how I help others and, um, and like how I just coach them through their like nutrition goals. What are your top sources of protein as, uh, like vegan protein? Yeah. And, and I'll be totally transparent, right? Like it is difficult on a plant-based diet to like Mm -hmm. eat a high protein diet with, while not increasing your calories intake significantly. Right. Cause like, like, so, I mean, I eat a lot of tofu and Mm -hmm. like, there's also the option to buy high protein tofu, which like has just higher protein in it. Um, And, but yeah, otherwise I just try to pick higher protein veggies and, or like quinoa that's higher in protein, eat some lentils, um, instead of eating regular pasta, I'll buy like bonza that's chickpea pasta because it has higher protein content. Mm -hmm. So just like finding those ways to increase protein, um, because it is, you know, it's not as easy for me as like eating a piece of salmon that has like 40 grams in that. Right, right, right. Like, so it's like, for me, my whole meal with all my vegetables and everything will be 40 grams, not just that piece of salmon. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, it takes a little bit more like thinking about it and centering the meal around the protein that you're going to eat. Yeah. I mean, I feel the same and that's also kind of why I've like, I've been, I've just let go of any sense of diet, um, restriction and just kind of gone towards just eating what I want to eat. I definitely eat more vegan at home, Mm -hmm. but because Matthew is like, still like I'm a vegan a hundred percent. He's the one that got me to be vegan. Cause when we met and started dating, well, when we started dating, I was pescatarian. Cause you know, and then I let that go and was eating everything. And then we were like, no, let's be vegan. And then we were vegan for like six years. Um, and Matthew still like, he holds on to it strongly. Um, and now, so I eat primarily vegan at home, but sometimes I'm still just like, I just, I kind of want some chicken. I kind of want, cause I feel like I'm so depleted in my energy and I haven't quite yet understood how to best get the nutrition that I need as an athlete. Cause it's one thing to not be an athlete and move your body and run the way that we run and be vegan. But when you're training for a marathon, I feel you being tired all the time. is hard. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just like, cause yeah. So exactly what you just said, like when you are an athlete, your protein like intake needs to be higher, just like exerting more energy. So you need it to replace, replace it as like, rather than someone who's just sedentary, right? Working an office job and like doesn't do activity, you're going to need less of it. So yeah. It's, um, yeah. So typically actually we have a, I just worked on a planting seeds post for this. I will go up tomorrow. Um, okay. We'll look out for that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so you typically like athletes should be consuming, like what, how it works is like 1.2 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So like, and it's like that. So typically that's going to put you somewhere around like depending on how much you weigh, of course, like 120 plus grams of protein per day. And so like a good way to break it up is like to, usually it's recommended to do like 
20 to 30 grams per meal or even your snack, right? Make sure it's like 20 grams so that you split it up throughout the day and it doesn't feel like, oh, at dinner time, I have to eat 80 grams. Like that's not possible. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> uh, or it's possible if you're not vegan, right? But like, when you're, yeah, but when you're plant based, it's a little harder. So yeah, it's just like a little bit more like intentional about the your planning and like what you're going to eat and just spending more time with it. It's, it's, yeah. It, but it, it will say, it, like, it is not easy, right? If it were easy, everybody would be out here doing it. So, yeah. Um, Ian, it. do you have Nathan. to hop off? Uh, yeah, in a minute. I'm I'm still good right now. Ian's but, uh, important, you guys. I just, you just have to say Ian's important. He's got the Nike team yeah. at his store about to look at some yeah. stuff and talk about some important things. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I might have to carry the rest of the interview, but it's okay. We're a team. We work together. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we pass the ball. It's an assist. But listen, Nathan, like, are, are you still a pescetarian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. like I said, I've been going strong with pescetarian for like 13 years now, whatever. But uh, I was vegan last year for like a month. I did the whole like vegan <laughs> January. I love you. Uh, I did it like just do it, just mess around. Um, you know, I'm dabbling to like really strong plant based, uh, a little bit with vegan, but I really just prefer. Be pescatarian, but even within that, I'm still trying to make sure I'm getting the healthiest source of everything. So, like, I don't really do like the farm raised fish. Uh, yeah. like, the and even explain that to people, like, mm-hmm. so grow on a farm, like, this shit, man. Fish don't grow on a farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know what they're feeding them on a farm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 wow. We've heard the stories. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, wow. But oh, go ahead. I know. Oh. So, I do have a question, like, because I feel like you know, at, at this point in time, like you can't eat fish every single day, yeah. you know? So, I mean, are you choosing because you have the op- op- option of eating like a high protein fish, like salmon, are you eating fish on the days where only on the days where you're doing like a tough workout and you need that recovery and then eating, you know, um, mostly plant-based on like non-workout days or like, yeah. Is, there, is there some thought process behind when you're choosing to eat the fish and when you're not? A little bit, yeah. So I do try to prioritize uh, just higher protein in general, if that is fish or something else, when I am, like, lifting it on to every day. So, like, yesterday, for example, like, my Apple Watch had me at, like, 1,500 calories burned. That was... We did two workouts yesterday, right? Uh, it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Well, man, I got my days mixed. But uh, <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday strength training ended the track workout with the uh, go go. But uh, well, I'll like, yeah, be working, working. Listen, <laughs> yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all gonna be fine as hell next but, time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but but yeah, to answer your question, like I really try to prioritize just more calories, more protein on those days, especially. Uh, so like that day, I remember uh, I went to Papa and he got like a a big tuna sandwich, so seventy grams of protein right there. Like, mm-hmm. like as a vegan, you can't really do that. <laughs> you can't just eat three grams of protein for the most part. Unless uh, you're getting uh, Impossible Meat and stuff like that, where it's yeah. like, I feel like you can get, because one burger will have 20 grams of protein in it. Um, and then they have the little sausage link. I, mean, I, yeah. I feel like there are ways. Uh, for sure. But, but I will say, like, just to that real quick, like, I, I try, try not to consume a ton of the processed like right. exactly yeah. right so like yeah. yeah it's a good supplement sometimes but i don't want to like do that all the time that's yeah. how i was feeling where i like was like right. i don't know maybe i should just eat the meat i, <laughs> I do i i do want to say before i hop off that like the the illest part about you both uh coming on here and, and speaking about you know being a pescatarian being a vegetarian, having planted seeds, is that like, I feel like this conversation you mostly hear from um, from the white community, whereas you both are from the black and brown communities. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm a little removed from, you know, the brown community in the sense that I grew up in a mostly black community um, and visited, you know, my Honduran family and that's Puerto Rican girlfriends on the weekend, <laughs> you know, so I'm a little bit removed, but to my understanding, it's like these, these terms and this concept and this way you looking at your diet is not that, it's not that prominent in a Latin community. Um, and so to sit here and watch you all speak about, speak 
in this way, um, really taking a look at what's really healthy for you, I think is really awesome. It's awesome to have that representation to uh, to show that, you know, we aren't monolithic and we can, you know, choose a different path from the way we grew up or, you know, look at different ways outside of what's norm in our cultures that might be a little bit harmful. But I also want to point out that, like, I follow this um, young lady on Instagram, uh, Latina Dietitian. I'm going to send it to you, Zindi. Um, what she also does talk about how healthy a lot of our traditional Latin foods actually are. And a lot of those, you know, a lot of those styles of eating aren't inherently, you know, non-nutritious or not healthy because it isn't Americanized or Europeanized and stuff like that. So, um... I feel like it's also dope for you all, for you as a plant-based person, because you don't just have to stick to, you know, cucumbers and lentils and all of that. Like you can go get some yucca, you can go get some, uh, some more native foods that, you know, come from your culture to just kind of like level up your plate even more because they work with you. Like our people have been eating these foods for hundreds and thousands of years and it works best for us and our bodies. And there's a way to do it in a very healthy way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And like, I have so many thoughts after that because like, I think plant-based diets were originated in black and brown indigenous communities. Right. But like, it's just become a thing now in our culture that like white people will be eating plant-based and we're going to overprice the shit out of it in these like restaurants and like, well, really, it's like we've been eating rice and beans forever, you know, and like our right, true. like, mm-hmm. yeah, and like, but yeah, absolutely, like that's one of our biggest things is like this isn't really talked about in black and brown communities, and like the main diseases that run through black and brown communities are preventable, right? Like, we're mm-hmm. talking about diabetes, heart disease, like all of these things that can be changed by changing your gut health and your like diet. Um, So it's like we, and by just increasing education and awareness about this in our communities can hopefully like create a change, right? Like, because even if like we are an example, but we have this conversation with other people who can have conversation with other people, like it's a ripple effect that we, that's definitely like the goal, right? Like we would love, we just want our people to be healthy and to be aware of what their options are. Right. 2000. I love that you said that like, like, like for us eating plant-based isn't like this exceptional thing or isn't like this different things, this decision that we have to make because it's already within our culture of us. It's just eating, yeah. you know? And now here in these communities, uh, like I said, you got terms like pescatarian, veganism, plant-based and stuff like that. That's kind of removed. Um, and I'm trying to say this in a thoughtful and, and correct way, but I feel like it kind of takes our identity away from it kind of takes our native way of eating from it um and makes it because even like what i just said the way i spoke from it's like these are white things and what you just said it's like nah it it is truly us it's how we normally eat and the way and when we don't eat in a way that works for us works for our culture then we start to experience all of these health issues and stuff like that yeah yeah. And I mean, that that's like a larger conversation about like the American, I mean, the American healthcare system and our food right here, the way that Americans eat. Yeah. Like, that. and it's actually, I watched this documentary about, I'm not forgetting the name now, but it's about how like basically America and McDonald's like spread the way that we consume food here to other countries. Like when we went global and how we just started affecting all these other indigenous communities who were way healthier before we stepped foot or like introduced McDonald's or fast food and like, all these other or Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. Coca-Cola yeah. is like the one company that you can find everywhere on the globe. Like mm-hmm. it's McDonald's, but like you can find a Coca-Cola machine yeah. everywhere. Well, and Coca-Cola is cheaper than water. Yeah. And that part. Com- well, and that it, part. it tastes better too. It t- it's right. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> and honestly, which is crazy. Um, Give me some rubies, drop a lime in and a, and a <laughs> tall bottle of cold, 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 cold. And that it's glass. In it. It's the glass. But drink water. Yeah, drink water. Yeah, it's the glass. It's, just it's the glass and the sugar bottle. that they use. Um, so, 
Uh, did, you, did you so, want to hop? I mean, no, no. Stop trying to get me. Well, up. I'm not you trying know. to get you off, but I'm also trying to give you a clean <laughs> cut because I'm like, are you still here? Uh, What's going on? Uh, I appreciate it. You know, no, I am. I'm probably. I'm probably gonna. Uh, I'm probably gonna hop off now. Um, listen, I just want to say thank y'all. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, I, I love the concept of planting seeds. I love to see, you know, to, uh, what do y'all prefer? Latinos, Latinas, Latin, that next, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm working with all of the, all, all of the, uh, proper terms here, but I love to see people who look like me in this space providing for people who look like us because, you know, we mm-hmm. need it. We just need to reconnect to the way we, we, we culturally actually do these things because that's what works for us. Mm-hmm. And so I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to hop off and thank you for coming on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love y'all. Bye, Bye, Ian. Yeah. Thank you, Ian. We'll have to hear more about your experience when on our next episode. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, but okay. So with all that being said, I also will say that like, just the concept of putting together, like putting these, everything has to be put into a box for it to be commercialized. That's part of it too, where like, it's, it has to be taken away from the culture and labeled in order for it to be something that can be marketable. And Mm -hmm. then others can like, you know, capitalize on it. And so, um, that that's really what it is that's what we live in and and i was watching uh looking at a meme the other day where it was like you just minding your business being creative and coming up with really cool ideas and then capitalism saying you can make money off of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, and it's yeah it adds stress and it adds like uh like it also makes you it creates a new, different type of tribalism as well, because then you have to identify yourself with certain tribes that align with like the type of person that you are. But then it's like, as human beings, we're naturally evolving and and changing and learning new things, which inform who we are and how we show up in the world. So then it's like, then you have to change your labels and changing your labels then makes other people uncomfortable because then they see you as a certain way. And like, I've experienced that just even being like a, a being very much plant based for a very long time and then now like being like i don't know i don't know whatever mm-hmm. like we can you know ian's gonna crack jokes about me being vegan sometimes now forever yeah. <laughs> and it's like it is what it is it's fine it's all friend friendly and and, and and for fun but then it's like yeah like so many people have known me as vegan for so long that now it's difficult for me to kind of like shift and become something else or like now have to be like okay so what is the label you're going by now yeah um, yeah. yeah. Or even like the negative connotations that come with some of it, like, like, especially mm-hmm. vegan, right? Like, it's like, oh, well, then you just must feel like you're so superior to everybody else because you eat plant based. And I don't ever feel that way. Yeah. Right. And I, I always try to be the person too who isn't like pushing it on others. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's, I don't want to drive you away from this idea or concept. And like, and I do feel like it's something that you need to be ready to explore it and you need to be, that's on your own time. Right. And it's like, if I will willingly have conversations with anyone about it, if they ask me, but mm-hmm. I'm never going to just talk about it or be like, everybody should be vegan. Cause I also don't think that that's true either. I think it's just what works for your body. Right. And like, for me, it's like, this works for me. And I, and if anyone else is interested and you don't even have to be a hundred percent plant-based, right. It's like, Let's just talk about what plant-based diets look like. Like Nathan eats mostly a plant-based diet, but still consumes fish. Like Mm -hmm. that's possible. And that has significant impacts on your health. Yeah. Cause it's like, realistically, we should all be eating more of a plant. uh, The larger percentage of our diet should be plant-based. Yeah. And that's like more of how I'm seeing it is like the percentage of everything that I eat. Cause like, I'm not going to go back to eating meat every meal. Cause that used to be me where I felt like I had to, the, the plate wasn't full unless there was some sort of like meat protein yeah. that was uh, from an animal. <laughs> um, so, um, but then I think the same thing goes for running. I think it's about like people see people who are disciplined in something where like, okay, you're, you're showing discipline in the way that you eat, which then it kind of exposes people and makes them kind of feel self-conscious because they feel like, okay, they could probably be more disciplined in the way that they eat. And mm-hmm. so then that, like that reflection of like, oh, you must be superior because you have a sense of discipline. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. in the way that you function on a daily day basis. And like the most important thing that like we all have to do, which is consume food. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, even so it's like that goes with like running and telling people that you're a marathoner and like or telling people that you can run five miles or like for you, Nathan, it might be like, OK, I go to the gym every day and it's like, OK, oh, so you must be OK. Mm-hmm. Like that's I think it's just really just a reflection of how other people feel. Yeah. No, that's true. It makes yeah. you think about because he recently, um, at, like he tells me sometimes about how he's at work and he'll like they'll have pizza there or something one day. So he like eats some pizza and they're like, Oh, Nathan's eating pizza, right? Like it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> I'm a like, human. <laughs> we I feel like we have learned like it, like this is also just a very human thing to do, right? Like people will project their insecurities onto like others, and so then it's yeah. like, we have just learned too that it's like, it's not even about you. You know, it's not about me. It's like, it's literally like, this is something you are feeling and that's okay. So, you know, we'll, I'll hold space for you <laughs> while you work through that. Because yeah. like, it actually has nothing to do with me. But yeah. yeah. So how have you worked together to become like kind of a better runner, I guess? Because like Nathan, I do want to get into like you as a personal trainer. And then like also with Zindi, I feel like you're... Show, seeing the way that you've explored running yeah, through, yeah. through like joining gumbo fit and then like understanding too where we all runners get to a place where like oh we need to like lift weights <laughs> yeah i mean i think i just have like a pretty unique background than like some traditional personal trainers uh so a little bit more about me i did track for three years in high school they have been cross country for one year mm-hmm. um, well i was never marathon running per se i do have a little bit better understanding on like feeling your body for running with that and even when i was in high school i'll i'll be the first to tell you that i did a really poor job of feeling my body but that was just because i was poor uh more than anything but yeah so like when i did track i was like a 400 meter runner primarily and then when i did cross country i did the two and three mile because that's how like cross country works in chicago at least mm-hmm you kind of see like, oh, my body needs different things versus if I'm just being in the gym, being a gym bro, lived in uh, 24-7. But as I got older, I kind of went through all these different phases with my like fitness and my like being an athlete. So when I was in college, I did go through like the very, very meathead gym bro phase where like you just in the gym nonstop, pounding, pounding meals, um, dirty bulking in the whole nine yards. And mm-hmm. then... I have a really fast metabolism, which causes me to burn calories at a really high rate. And I didn't have a car in college. So, like, I don't like bike everywhere. So, like, I went through a phase where I was like eating 4,000 calories a day, like losing weight. Uh, so, like, Crazy. I tell you, but like, I have these experiences to draw off of, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, and I've also like gone through the putting on weight too fast and like losing my like mobility and like my joints feel achy and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, just because. As a person I alluded to earlier, always being skinny growing up, I did at one point have all these goals. So, like, put on all these pounds and, like, look a certain way. Uh, that don't anymore. But, you know, when we started dating, I think her running changed a lot uh, over time in a very short amount of time. Because when we first started dating, she was, like, terrified of jumping this, like, one-mile relay. And I always gave her shit about it. Because I was like, run the mile, bro. Like, you still, <laughs> like, it's not that deep. I was like, all the people there, like, they bump you. Like, Ian's going to be clapping for you. Corny's going to be over there, you know. It's right. going to be uh, uh, back in 2020. But, you know, in a very short time period, she went from that to be a marathon runner. Um, probably for like a year, honestly. Um, so with that, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm like a very observational person like i just be like people watching all the time so like mm-hmm. i don't, like see like firsthand like her body like breaking down um and like watching that firsthand i was like it was pretty obvious to me i was like you need more calories you need more protein you need different train. different different vitamins even like i had a structure to make these a couple other things that i just knew would help her recover better but yeah when it came to strength training that was kind of like adding that piece to the puzzle because I think in general running the injury rate is really high. Um mm-hmm. including me myself, uh lap. a big reason I haven't really ran this year is because I just like suffered a lot of plantar fasciitis at the beginning of the year. That I really took like six months off to get like hundred percent right. Yeah. Uh, with me personally, I think a lot of runners like just like like running through injuries. That sounds weird to say. Yeah, it's like a it's like you're it, it's like running 
I feel like after five miles, it's just like a mental thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But like me personally, just in general, like I hate being injured, like at anything. Like, yeah, I feel like the smallest thing. I'm like, we need to address this, like right now, and like shut down or do whatever mm-hmm. I got to do. So like, I would see her like having these injuries pile up and pile up, and be like, oh, my feet really hurt. Oh, I think this 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 is like a sprain or something, or oh, like my knees hurt. This or that, my hips are terrible. And I was like, we kind of just need to like, like tear everything down and like start from scratch and get you. Yeah. And even that, she was like terrified to go to the gym. Like the first like month she went to the gym, she'd come home crying Facts. and being like, and being like, oh man, like I don't know what I'm doing over there. And I was like, and nobody else knows what to do it either. Like, I mean, but you so- were with her. You were with Zin. Like you were together, or were you going by yourself, Zin? I was not, we were not together because she decided not to sign up at the gym that I was at at the time. Yeah. She decided oh, to- I kind of, you know, when sometimes you just want to do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I was having one of those moments, but also, no, I mean, a hundred percent, like Nathan taught me everything that I know about strength training. And yeah. what I will say is like last summer, I did have more like nagging, like just like mini injuries that would pop up throughout marathon training. You know, when you're like feet hurt or your hips hurt or whatever. And I was not really strength training right outside of like that one session with Mama K that we were doing in the Gumbo Fit cohort. Yeah. I, like, I really should have just like, what I noticed is like this year, I, so actually after the marathon, I, I took the winter to really just strength train seriously mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. a couple of months. And then I came back early this year to, you know, I was like, damn, after Shamrock Shuffle, I was like, I need to start running because we're we going to see what we were going to run this year. And then I was invited on the Gumbo Fit HTC team. So I was like, okay, I got to, Gotta get my life together. And but I one thing that I was like, okay, if I'm gonna really if I'm gonna start running again five times a week, I need to strength train twice a week minimum. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. How I many really, ways say that again? Say that one more time, just so everybody like, can hear it. If I'm running five times a week, I really committed to a strength training twice a week minimum. Okay. Yeah. And I kept that all summer. And I I mean, this summer was like totally different than last summer. I felt like way stronger. Like I and then I completed HTC and finished and I was like pain free. Yeah. Wow. And I feel like that's like a reflection of like you should like strength training really does significantly add to a runner's training. Yeah. Especially as women, like we have to, we lose our, our uh, muscle. What is it? The bone density after yeah. the age of like 30, we lose this percentage and then just continues to go down. So then it's like you become frail. Mm-hmm. And you got to like maintain it with all of the, like all of the, like moving every day. I think for me, it's just about like, are you getting outside? Are you moving your body? Are you running? And if you're running, like you don't have to do 10 miles. You can do a couple miles every day and hit the gym. Like you're saying like a couple times a week. And, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, even just like, I think there's an expectation to just point out your, like, like that point of like hesitation of going to the gym and not really knowing what you're doing, but like, going and being like, okay, I can put in 75, 80%. I don't need to, people like to go like 150% day one, and then they get tired and fatigued because they've overworked their muscles and then they don't want to go back to the gym when it's like, it's, it's just like running. You cannot start at 20 miles. You have to build up to that. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I cut you off. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, I think, I think, uh, with, uh, with running, you know, it's like I always think of like what Kayla Jeter always says. It's like runs a balancing act, one leg to the other. Oh, uh, yeah. When you're programming for strength training for that, you need to take a really unilateral focus. So you need to really focus on s- single joint isolation movements, you know. So like, for example, instead of just doing like a, bar- a barbell squat, we'll make you do a single leg squat, something mm-hmm. like that. So that's like stuff I'll program. Um, and it's just really making sure that you have that maintenance, um, like right now with some of the people working with that we sold programs to. They also like have that approach, but like, do I got to go 100 day one? And it's like, no, nah, we're not really doing that. Especially if I'm giving you just a two day a week plan, like really take this as maintenance work. Um, yeah. don't, don't take this as like, you're going to, you're going to become a gym bro over these, these next 10 weeks. But, uh, how do you implement this to support what your running goals ultimately are? Right. Right. You know, oh yeah. Cause actually, um, yeah basically y'all shameless plug buy the runner strength plan do yourself a favor what is the runner strength plan that let tell us more i want to know <laughs> yeah so the runner strength plan is 10 weeks long it's priced at 50 dollars on a website i believe uh but you get two workouts every week a lot of it is i'm just saying unilateral focus so a lot mm-hmm. of single movements single arm everything 
And it's really just like a really complimentary guide to your running. Um, so if you're training for a 5K, a 10K, even up to a marathon, um, it can really just benefit you and making sure that your muscles aren't breaking down the way mm-hmm. your training cycle. And if you approach it right, you know, you slowly build your way up over time with the gym, like we're saying, don't start at 100. I mean, it'll just really help you stay pain-free, injury-free, if applied right, you have good form. Yeah. Now, with uh christian the other day i was uh because he bought the plan um and i was just like yeah you know like look at this as i'm gonna go in start slow build my way up i'm not maxing out on anything it's also not programmed for you to max out like mm-hmm. we're never asking you to do one rep of anything because runners don't really need that if you're a distance runner mm-hmm. um but it's like how do i use this to really work on my body over time and make sure that i'm not breaking down right Wow. Okay. Well, so then, and so you're focusing a lot of your work with planting seeds towards runners, it sounds like, or do you feel like you're like, I mean, the, I mean, you're in the running scene, but then Nathan, you're also kind of in and out of it. So I'm sure that your clients are a mix, but it sounds like a lot of it is focused towards runners. Yeah. I'd say our clients are a good mix. Um, cause I think we do have like just regular strength training programs, right. For the gym. Um, yeah. And, but yeah, I think just because I'm so deeply involved in the running community, there's a lot of runners and interested. So that's what yeah. like we're like, oh, we should create a runner shrink plan. Like, um, so that's like, yeah, it inspires some of what we do too, you know, like just based on what people talk to us about. And um, but I so actually after getting the RCA certification, I am interested in launching coming soon, like basically offering some coaching services for newbie runners. Yes. Someone who wants more structure around like a 10 K plan, like how do I like, what do my speed workouts look like? What is this? Whatever. Like, I would love to start working with runners more on a one-on-one basis and talk with them about their nutrition too. Yeah. Um, so that's in the works. Well, how was RCA for you? Cause I, cause like, you know, you have, you're, you've been on, um, your, like you said, you're a Gumma Fit captain. Really happy to have you on the team. It's been really great, like just your expertise and your commitment and just um, also your excitement for the RCA, like that like program to get you in there and all that. Like that was something that I really wanted to do for our crew because I know so many of you are so passionate about it where it's like for you, I knew specifically like, okay, Zindy's going to be like, I can see you as a coach. So that this is like exactly what I had hoped that this would kind of material uh, lies into for you. Um, especially just like with what you've built with Nathan. So like, it's really exciting to see you just like bring together your expertise. Cause you can really help so many athletes on so many different levels because you are also a nutritionist because you also are doing plant and seeds and you have your programs already. So, um, how was like the class, from your perspective, from like already getting other certifications Mm -hmm. and like, how do you see it? Like, how do you see yourself kind of like moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I thought it was good. I thought a lot of it, honestly, probably 50% of it, or if not more, I kind of already knew because I feel like when you train for a marathon, like something like a marathon, you learn learn so much (laughs) just through your, your experience. Um, so I felt like I already, had a good base going into it. So it really just complemented what I already knew by like teaching us how to properly program a training plan. Right. Right. So it's like how how to write one and like how much you should increase mileage per week, what like the different stages of it are like more of that stuff was really helpful to know so that, you know, like that's really helpful to understand how to write a training plan for somebody or how to appropriately train a a speed workout and what are more appropriate speed workouts, depending on the distance that you're trying to race. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I thought it was really helpful in, in that way. And, um, I, I did think, you know, I did leave kind of being like, Oh, I feel like, cause it's only a two day course, right? Eight hours. It is long, but like my nutrition, and coach, for example, that I was given a year to complete that because it's just so much information. information like, yeah. A whole textbook. Yeah. Oh, and like, um, so it's more like definitely more in depth, a lot, like a lot of quizzes, lots of like, you know, you take that big exam at the end to get certified. And I know you do for the RCA too, but um, yeah, so I don't know. I almost felt like I need that level two or something, you know, to like keep. Like running is also, I mean, that's kind of the thing too, right? Like as when you become a coach, like you should always be learning because everything's also always changing and like you want to adapt to like the needs of your, the folks you're working with and like 
all that good stuff. What's interesting about running is that like there really isn't no, there isn't an expectation for you to have a coach or certification. Like it's actually not, and a lot of people don't know this, but like, I remember asking around and being like, okay, if I wanted to be a coach, what, what's, what is the pipeline? What's the roadmap? And everybody around me was like, well, you could do this. You could do this, but like, no one really expects you to know this. And I realized with running a lot of coaches just coach from being like a runner themselves being coached and then knowing like certain things, like a lot of people aren't certain. Some of the, some of the higher up yeah. coaches that you know of that are, have big names don't have any certifications with, within running. It's yeah. just experience, mm-hmm. which is yeah. wild. Yeah. I believe that. I mean, that makes, it makes total sense. Cause I feel like running is kind of that. I mean, everything is, but especially running is kind of like a trial and error situation. You yeah. like from your mistakes, like, and you, and it'll, right. It'll be like that really shitty run you have, or, you know, you didn't fuel and whatever, everything went wrong. And you're like, okay, I mean, now I have all these takeaways though for the next one. And I feel like mm-hmm. it is kind of that experience whenever anyone starts to do like long distance running. Yeah. Cause you could take like courses and get certified in like general health and wellness. Cause like you can be a trainer at the gym and do that, but like very like, very, not many people. What I realized when I took RCA was that like, there's a lot of people who were just taking it because they wanted to learn more as a runner themselves. Like they didn't even want to be a coach. They just wanted to just be there and learn about running. So it's, it's an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I guess, so I'm curious now with what you're creating, um, and you've, you're now going into the fall. Do you have any programs that you're starting? Or just like prepping runners during that, you know, that Midwest winter season to come out on the other end, badasses. And like, you know, I mean, we did, we just launched last week, last week, the intermediate strength plan. So it's like we we have the beginner one, which is like for somebody who's straight up, maybe has never been in the gym before or has, but has, has no idea how to structure a workout. Mm -hmm. So that was like that one. It's a little begin, it's more beginner friendly. And so then we were asked by a couple of folks, like for something a little more challenging for someone who might already know their way around the gym. Like, and, um, so we created the intermediate strength plan. That would be like a good plan for like, if a runner just finished their marathon and now they're going to take some off season through the winter, like get the intermediate strength plan you know, build yourself a good, you could still run on that plan, you know, like, a, yeah. a, like have a, keep a base going, whatever, and like do the strength on top of it, um, to prepare you for spring running season. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like, I think like we're gonna, we still need to spend time, uh, in the works with the running coaching side of things. Um, but, but yeah, I think like we, we also just been like, honestly, cause we, you know, we have nine to fives on top of this. So right. like, yes. um, it's a lot to like, um, and we both started new jobs around the same time. So trying to learn to balance that too, you know, like having your side hustle because it's a, it's a lot, but yeah. More, right. more. Sure. Well, okay. So then um, before we jump off, I just want to know Zindi, just because we were at, yeah. we were, we went to HVC together. We were, you know, we were also in the same van, van two, you know what I mean? Run too hard. Chicago too hard. <laughs> right. Chicago too hard, van <laughs> two. Um, just tell me about your experience. Cause I shared a little bit about mine in the last episode that we recorded that is going to be released today actually. But, um, I just want to know like any takeaways that yeah. you've had since you've been able to reflect. Yeah. I mean, you know, so like low key before we went to HTC all summer, right? It was rough because like, <laughs> like I mentioned, I took the winter off. So then mm-hmm. coming back to training, full running all summer, right? I was like, Damn, this is so hard. Like taking any time off of running and coming back into it, man, you really got to show yourself grace because it's it be hard out here. Um, yeah. But so I was like really questioning just like my fitness level, like if long distance running, is that even like something I like? Like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, am I going to run another marathon? Like these were all things that were like on my mind all summer. Um, and so I really went into HTC being like, what up? We're just going to see, right. Like just vibes, no goals. Like, and I did impress myself with like how I did and how Mm -hmm. I felt after. And I think like the relay style is so fun. It's so much fun. And like, it makes, it makes long distance running fun. Right. Cause like sometimes it could be like rough out here, just running 26 miles straight for hours. Um, so like the relay side, yeah, I, I loved it. Like, and I feel like it reinvigorated me like mm-hmm. afterwards I was like, oh, this, I needed this. Like, 
I like proved to myself that I can and that like um, that long distance running, I do love it, right? It just like can look different for me. And maybe it's not a marathon. Maybe I'm a half marathoner kind of mm-hmm. sit, right? Unless mm-hmm. it's the relay, then I'll, I'm all in for it. But um, yeah, I don't know about you, but I, d- during my legs, I would just remember like in the second and third leg, like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that this is not a marathon. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm going to be done in like one yeah. mile. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the, the breaks, the breaks were like clutch. It really did. Like, you know, I mean, they weren't super long, but still you don't have to like continuously run for a very long time. So yeah, I thought, I mean, it was amazing. Also Portland, like the scenery was great. The bonding with the team was amazing. Like getting to know everyone a little better and like, it was dope. Like, thank you for, you know, organizing every, like, I mean, I know we like all did planning together and everything, but like, you know, thank you for creating the space and making it possible for all of us. For dope. sure. I, I mean, it was honestly so much fun and it was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And like to be able to take the team and go to a different state and do something together is like, this is like my childhood as an adult, like I'm able to be a child and do fun things with other, like, you know, with other people that I really enjoy being around. And I think that that's like the most, um, like rewarding aspect of it is like just being a kid again and being like, I'm going to go on this trip with my friends and we're going to go running. And it's just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, would you, so you would do it again? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Put me on the team back next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> back. I'm like, I just feel like we just need to get, I just want to see more Chicago of Chicago out there. I feel like we just make things live. And, yeah. um, I mean, I I'm cl- claiming Chicago, even though I'm in LA, but like I just, the Midwest has my heart and I feel like more of us need to be representing the Midwest in these spaces to let them know, like, we're, we're out here, we're athletes, we're moving, we have community, like we have a lot of love for the people that are around us. And like these, those moments where we can like do that in public spaces is really special. Agreed. So yeah. are you, and you're not running the marathon this year, right? No, I'm not. So I'm helping me and Mike are really holding down the cheer station. Right. right? So mm-hmm. I'll do that. Um, and no, I think, I think I'll, um, I got to run one more marathon because I need my redemption one, you know, because mine went so bad last year. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Um, so like I might do, um, I'm hoping to do one next year. Not sure which one yet. Mike's really trying to get me to do LA. We'll you should. see. You should. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I yeah, I should. <laughs> but otherwise, um, might look at one in the fall. Um, but yeah, this, this year, I'm, there's no more running plans on the schedule. Just, um, you know, doing the community rounds of gumbo and, and then we'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Nathan, do you have anything to add that you're working towards this, this winter, anything before we hop off? Nah, uh, I'm just, I mean, it's not, it's not a big race, but I'm just going to do hot chocolate 5k, you know, come yes. over. I haven't even done the hot chocolate yet. And I've heard that it's so much fun. Yeah, it's a good time. We did it last year. Uh, so now we're trying to make it like our annual thing, but like do it every year. Is that yeah. in November? Yeah. yeah, I don't remember the date. I forgot. But, yeah, okay. I think it's first weekend. Something like that. Perfect. Okay, cute. Okay, back to the running bay situation. <laughs> Seeing you guys out there looking cute. Yeah, and honestly, like I think, like, well, a lot of people like the hot chocolate, but I feel like it's underrated in the sense that like everyone's looking towards like Shamrock and like the half of the marathon, but it's like that's a fun little. It's, yeah. it, it's giving when you marry into a family that runs and then you have to run the turkey trot. That's what it's giving. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Those are, those are our goals. We aspire to be that. Family. Same, same. Like my kids are going to be running. Like I'm like, I, I, if anything, I'm like, I hope that they do cross country. Cause like I didn't, was never introduced to cross country. And I'm like, I feel like that would be really great to just like be that family that runs. I'm sure. sure. Should. So awesome. um, tell people where they can find you. So yeah. that we can make sure everyone follows and supports. Yeah. Uh, right now, you go to our website, planningseedchicago.com. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram. Uh, what's your Instagram handle? At Planning Seed Chicago, I think it is too. Yeah. Um, and then individually, mine is just my name, Zindy Marquez. Shout out having a unique name so you get your handle right, you know? Yeah. And then, um, Nathan is... The Nathan Cordero. Um, and also we are now on TikTok also. So, yeah. Ooh, what's the TikTok? Is it planting seeds? 
Uh, so it's underscore planting seeds. Yeah. Okay. I'll follow it now. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I know like Ian's probably like, dang, I probably had so many more questions. So we'll probably have you guys back on <laughs> yeah, uh, really. and get it like another little check-in on how you, how you're doing and, um, and all of that. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Of Bye. course. Yes. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Okay, so that was our interview with Nathan and Zindi. Make sure to follow them, support them. Planting Seeds is really dope. Um, ever since they started, I've been just kind of like watching what they're doing and it's just like, you know, growth. So how you can best support is by following, liking, and sharing, right? Participating. Buy a fitness plan. Clearly, I'm by myself just talking. So um, <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up. Um, but this is another episode of the Runners Club podcast. I'm your co-host, Courtney Phillips. Ian, you know, he had to hop because he's got important things to do. Um, But I'm going to give him shit next time we hop on because like, bruh, this is for the two of us. And where are you right now? Look at me. Just look at myself in the screen by myself. I don't have Ian giving me shit. It's just me looking at me. Um, So if you've gotten this far, I love it. I love it. You know, follow, subscribe. You can send us in your listener letters. It's the Runners Club Podcast 773 at Gmail. Like, tell us your running like favorites. What what do you like to run with? What what is your biggest running qualm right now? Like, what really bothers you? Is it like bikers on the runner trail on, on the walking trail right now? Like, like what's really like eating at you and you really want to talk about it? Cause we can have a moment. We could do it like we can have a little bit of a read moment on the podcast where we talk about shit that annoys us within running. But then it also could be like, you know what I'm really loving right now is the goop sunscreen. Like that's personally one of my favorites. Cause if you're not wearing sunscreen when you're running, like, I don't know um, why you're not, but you should be. But like, I love to talk about products that I'm really that I, that I geek out about for running, right? I love me some glide. I love all the things. What kind of socks are you wearing, right? Do you wear merino wool socks? Do you wear low socks? Do you wear mid socks? Like, what are your preferences? I feel like we should talk about this more because runners are weird and our habits are even weirder. And I feel like it could be good conversation. So please, you if you don't want to send an email, you could just DM the Instagram page and just be like, hey, I just want to share this thing would love that. Okay. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks again for listening to our episodes, to the podcast in general. Have a great rest of your day. Continue to get these miles. Peace.